What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the most popular functions within Excel. Now being the most popular is very subjective. So I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, these are the ones that I think are the most popular. These are the ones that when I'm out in the real world working with real people and real data, these are the ones that I see people use a lot. They may not be the most common Excel functions, but I think they're very, very popular amongst a lot of Excel users. Most likely if you're new to Excel, a lot of these functions are probably gonna be ones that you haven't used before because they aren't really the basic simple functions that you'll see every single day. But without further ado, let's jump on my screen and take a look. So let's jump right into it. Let's get started with this function called date diff. Now date diff is gonna give you either years, months, days of the difference between two different dates. And this is a really, really good function to use, especially if you're working with something like transactions or diagnoses or something like this, where you have a hire and a termination date and you're looking for maybe the average time someone spends at your company. And so this can be a really powerful function to use. And so we're gonna come in here and first one that we're gonna look at is how to do this with years. How many years have passed from this date to this date? So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna say equal to, and we're gonna say date. And it's not even showing up down here, but I promise you it's in there. We're gonna say date diff. Now there are three arguments that we need to pass through, or three parameters if you wanna call it a parameter. First, we need the starting date, then we need the end date, then we need to specify our date measurement, and that's gonna be year. So we're gonna do uh, a year just like this, and we're gonna close our parentheses. And it's gonna tell us that this is an 11 year difference. Now we can uh, roll this all the way down. You can see this is a five year difference, a 10 year difference. And that may not look immediately right, because we have 2008 and we have 2019, but notice that this is on 130 and this is 1112. Here it's looking at full complete years that have elapsed between the first date and the second date. So this is only uh, 10 years and let's say two and a half months. So it hasn't been a full 11 years. So it's only gonna have 10 right here. Now, this exact formula is going to work or this exact function is going to work for months as well, except all we have to do is change this to an M. And when we run that, you can see this is 133 months all the way down with this and this is in months and we can do the exact same thing for days as well so we're going to come in here and for days we're just going to put a d there and we're going to scroll that all the way down so this is a super popular function within excel especially when you're working with multiple dates and you're trying to find the difference between them you don't often just want to say is equal to uh let's do this minus this because it's gonna give you the day, but what if you don't want just the days? You want the months or the years or some other measurement. And so that is a really, really good one to know how to use. Let's go on to our next one, which is gonna be text split. I don't know about you, but I see data like this all the time. Uh, I used to work in healthcare, and within healthcare, we would have a lot of patient addresses. And oftentimes we wanna do some type of analysis on their zip code or maybe their state or city. And we needed to split out this data, and that's where this text split function comes into play. So we can come in here, and we can say is equal to text split. It's gonna split text into rows or columns using delimiters. So when we come in here, we have different parameters. You have text and the column delimiter, and we even have additional stuff as well if we want to specify them. But in the most simplest sense, we just pass through our text, and then we say, okay, our delimiter, it's mostly a comma, but we have a space between these, and we'll see that in just a sec. We can do a comma, then we specify, we have a comma as our delimiter. And just like that, we have 123 Main Street, Springfield, Illinois 62701. And we can drag this all the way down. Now you'll notice I kind of have this little light blue line around this. That's because we wrote the function right here. It's in this column. But as we go over, you'll notice there is no function in this column or this column. That's because it all took place in this first one. Now, we can still use this data. We can come over here and we can split this one into the zip code. We can do equals and we'll do a text split. And let me go back in. We'll do text split and we'll reference this cell. We'll do comma with a space this time. And if we scroll over, uh, it's over here because 
you can see in the data really quick. Let's zoom in really close. There's a space here. Um, and so that is uh, just a slight issue, I guess you could say with it, but it did split it properly uh, based off of the actual data. But either way, the data, uh, whether it sits in there or not, we're still able to split it and we're able to get all the data. Now, typically when I get it like this, because we have all these uh, cells that where it's kind of like phantom populated, is then I'll take all this data and I will then paste it in as a value. And so then that value, this actually becomes the text that was in there. So then I can come in here and I could, you know, clean up this data further with something like trim and I can trim down that data. And for this one, I can still bring it all the way down and we'll take all of this. And this is a little bit trickier actually, because if we try to put this in the state and zip code, if you watch this, we're going to paste this as values. It's not going to work. And that's because we still have, let's do control Z real quick. We still have this formula in here reading off of this data. So we're overwriting it and then the uh, data doesn't work. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna paste it as values right underneath, at least for this example. Then we can uh, delete all this and we can copy this through. There are probably more efficient ways to do this, but uh, you know, knowing how to use, uh, you know, paste as values is actually you know, quite useful as well. So that is how text split works. Again, uh, it can be very handy when you're working with wanting to split out names or locations or addresses. Very, very, very helpful and popular within Excel. Next, we're going to take a look at an if statement. Now, if statements allow you to specify a condition that needs to be met in order for something to happen. And so let's say, for example, we have our sales right here. This is our employee name. Then we have uh, how much they actually sold. Now the target, let's say, was 5,000. They needed to sell more than 5,000 to meet their target. So we're gonna say is equal to, and we're gonna say if, now real quick, uh, the if says checks whether a condition is met, it returns one value if true, and another value if it's false. So we're gonna open up, this logical test says this number needs to be greater than 5,000 in order for this value of true to be uh, populated. So if they did, we're gonna say yes, their target was met. If it was false, if it was less than 5,000, if it didn't meet this criteria, then we're gonna say no. And there you go, this person did not meet that criteria, but we had multiple people who did. And you can write almost anything. And in fact, you can have if functions within if functions, you can have nested if functions for a ton of multiple criteria need to be met. And if this happens, then do this. Another way that an if function can be used is for doing some type of simple calculation. So let's say, you know, if they met their goal, we're gonna give them 10% of the sales that they made. So we're gonna say it's equal to, and we'll do if just like we did. So if this, is greater than the 5,000. If that is true, then we're gonna take the sales number times and we'll give them 10%, which is 0.1. This will be their bonus. If it's false, they get zero. And so this person, they got zero as a bonus. And you can see we uh, have some people who made some good money because they did meet their target that they were trying to achieve. Now there's one other function that I wanna show you and that's these if functions combined with aggregate functions. Now, if we just type in here, we're gonna say equal. Let's say we wanted to do a count if. A count if says counts the number of cells within a range that meets the given criteria. So count is very common. It's just an aggregate function. It gives us a count of how many cells are within the range. But what if we only want to count the ones that meet a criteria? That's where this count if comes in. So we can give them the range. We can say here's the range. And our criteria is the people who met it. So we're going to say uh, is greater than 5,000. But because this is count if, we actually have to put this within quotation marks. If we don't, it will not work. You can go ahead and try it. Um, so we're going to do count if greater than 5,000. And you can see that we have three people who have uh, met their target of $5,000. And there's also ones like average if, count if, all these different ones. In fact, I think if we put in, uh, maybe not, I was going to say average if, but we have average if. We have uh, some if, we have all different types of these combinations where it's this logical statement or conditional statements combined with an aggregate function. And they're very useful. The next one we're gonna look at is substitute. 
Now, substitute is really popular because oftentimes when you're working with real data, uh, the data doesn't come in perfect format. For example, this one right here, um, we have these dashes. And if you know anything about you know certain databases, certain databases doesn't like different types of characters. Maybe it's a comma. Uh, certain databases don't like commas. Certain databases do not like dashes and so on and so forth. But underscores tend to be pretty safe throughout all of them. And so what if we wanted to change this? Maybe our database is reading this in when we uh, you know, connect it into a database or something. Is reading this in incorrectly. It's maybe separating out these values because of this dash. We can come in here and we can say equal substitute. Substitute is going to replace existing text with a new text in a string. So it has to be uh, a string. So we're going to do substitute. Here's our text. Our old text is going to be a dash. Our new text is going to be, let's do an underscore, just like that. And then we're going to close it. We'll hit enter. And you'll see that we've changed this entire thing. So now we can apply this to all the rows. And this is really, really helpful, not just for, you know, changing it like this. It's also really good for cleaning up data that's not, you know, correct. For example, if we come in here, there'll be times where, you know, data will accidentally start with a comma. Super, super common, unfortunately. We can say is equal to substitute. And we're going to go and get rid of that comma. So we're going to say within A8, we had a comma. And now we're going to want nothing. And we're just going to leave that blank. So right here... This is where we're specifying the comma. This is where we're specifying we want to replace it with nothing. Hit enter, and it gets rid of that completely. Now, what's so great about substitute is you can actually stack these on each other. So you can also do uh, substitute on this text. And so now we can then do it again. So now this is our text right here. This one where we just got rid of it. So it's the SKU-789. Now that becomes our text, and we can say uh, the old text is a dash, just like we did above, and now we want an underscore. There we go. And so you can stack these, and you can really uh, filter out a lot of bad data or bad things that you don't want in there, and you can replace it with something that you do want. And so that is really common, really popular to do within Excel, especially with, for things like data cleaning. I found that to be extremely helpful. The last thing that we're going to take a look at is XLOOKUP. Now, you may have heard of VLOOKUP. You may have heard of HLOOKUP, which is vertical lookup and horizontal lookup. But XLOOKUP to me is just much better than those. And it's becoming extremely popular, and you're seeing it a lot more in the actual workplace. Even people who are a little bit older, uh, who've been using Excel since like the 90s, they're starting to, you know, get around to the times and starting to use XLOOKUP. And if you're older and you're still using VLOOKUP, that wasn't an attack on you. I love you. So let's come up here. We're going to choose um, XLOOKUP. Let's, let's look this up real quick. It says it searches a range or an array for a match or returns a corresponding item from a second range or array. Now, if you don't know what that means, uh, let's actually exit out of here real quick. So say we want to get, uh, we have this data in one area of Excel, and we have this data in another area of Excel. But we want to have this county right here, but we can't just copy and paste this because it's going to be wrong uh, because maybe Springfield and let's see, Ogdenville, oh, that is green. Let's see, Springfield is supposed to be Haverbrook, and it's green because we just copied and pasted it over. And uh, this capital city is supposed to be green. And so not everything lines up exactly as it needs to be. And so what we can do is we can populate this data properly according to how the data actually sits over here. And this is really, really powerful. Let me hit uh, control Z real quick. Really, really powerful. This is just an example, but imagine you're working with, you know, 50,000 rows. This can save you weeks worth of manual work. Uh, and so we're just going to, um, we're going to use this real quick. Now, XLOOKUP is very simple to use, and I'm not even going to compare it to VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP because those are a little bit more confusing. I'm just going to show you the power of XLOOKUP. So what's our lookup value? What are we trying to search for? We're searching for this. Where do we want to look up that array? Right down here in this city. And then what do we want to return? We want to return the county. That's it. That's all we need. We're going to hit enter. And this one was correctly populated with Haverbrook. So uh, let's see, we have Springfield, there's Haverbrook. So that gets populated. So it looks in here, it says Springfield is right here. 
This is our return array. And so it just says, okay, let's go over here. We're gonna take this one. It's as easy as that. Now, one thing to note is we can't just pull this down like this uh, because what happens is, is as we go down, this lookup array and return array go down with it. And so as you get, whoops, as you go all the way down, you'll notice they're way far down because as we uh, shift these downward, all of our reference cells are also going down. So what we need to do is we need to come up here and we actually need to anchor this. We have to say F4 and F4. You notice these uh, dollar signs right here. That means that that is not going to change. That is gonna be anchored in. So now when we hit enter, that one's gonna work. But as we drag it down, every single one is going to work. Because when we come in here, this lookup array, this return array didn't change. And we didn't want it to change. The only one we wanted to change was the city as we dragged it down. So these are some of the most popular Excel functions. One that uh, as you really start getting into Excel, you're going to be using a lot, especially if you're working with a lot of data. You're going to be using these ones all the time. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you learned something. Uh, if you did, be sure to like and subscribe below. I have a ton of Excel videos. And I also have a full Excel course over on analystbuilder.com along with all of my other courses on SQL, Python, Tableau, and more. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one.